Welcome to Commander Central, the first show of 2019. And as always, temper your expectations and prepare to settle for less as we talk about cards that have variable outcomes that are still great on the low end. Um, I'm Dana. I'm Max. And I'm Chris. And as a friend of mine uh, was once told by his father, it's better to aim low and hit than shoot high and miss, which seems like terrible advice for a parent to give your son, but a friend of mine's dad once told him that. How was everyone's new year? Short. Anybody go out or do anything exciting? <laughs> I'm too old You're for t- that. <laughs> I'm, it was hard enough to stay up till one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm getting too old. <laughs> well, I, I had a, I've got a Christmas story, actually, that I meant to tell last week and I forgot. Um, and I'll preface this with a little bit of setup and say, I have cats in my house and they don't like to drink water down by their food dish. They want to drink water for whatever reason by us, preferably out of the sink. Which is really annoying to have them like trying to brush your teeth, trying to drink water. So we found out that if we put a little dish of water on the counter in the kitchen and the bathroom, they'll drink that and they'll leave the sink alone. Weird. So, so I will set this story up by pointing that out to you first of all. Uh, we had visitors over Christmas break. Um, my wife's family was there, including her grandmother, staying at our house. And, um, you know, we had a nice Christmas. Um, it was like the 22nd, I think, they were there. Um, so we got up the next morning, and her, her grandmother uh, came downstairs and said, you need to get those cats some water. And I was like, oh, okay, why? They were drinking out of my denture dish this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it took me a minute <laughs> to realize, oh, she just put her dentures in the cat's water bowl that was on the counter in the bathroom. <laughs> and then was mad at the cats for drinking the water because she thought that was her denture dish for some reason. <laughs> And I'm oh trying boy. to and I'm trying to keep a straight face and not be like that's the cat's water bowl that you put in your dentures and I'm like okay I'll 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 take care of that <laughs> so yeah I meant to relay that little uh, interesting Christmas bit of happening to you guys last week but I forgot it that's great uh, now we got to play some games after having a little, little bit of time off on New Year's Day we got to crank out at least I played I think half a dozen games Chris tested some modern uh, Max played a few before he. The, the night before, caught up with him and he had to go home. I had to go home, yep. Uh, any good games get played? I played my Tajik deck for a lot of games that day. Yeah, you did. How did it play for you? Experimental Frenzy is awesome. So the one game you played against me, you played it, and in two turns... 12 cards? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it was at least 10. It might have been 12 or 13. It was at least 10, I bet, because it was just like land into... You know, sort of the animus into, I remember what it was, but like yeah. you were just casting one and two drops off that deck. I hit a weird pocket where I had a cathartic reunion on top. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to cast it because I'm not? just holding lands and like seven drops in my hand that I don't want to cast. And I busted through a pocket of lands and then just kept going with yeah. that cathartic reunion. It was great. Such a good card in that deck. So yeah, I was going to, I definitely was going to mention that one as well. Um, I was hoping my plan for the, for 2019, I was hoping to go undefeated, um, but that fell apart. I made it four games in. I, I actually won my first four games, but the whole year is now falling apart. I lost the, the two after that. So uh, undefeated for 2019 is not going to happen, uh, I was hoping, but nope. Um, I did manage to get a Helm of the Hosts on a Jeru that no one responded or was able to respond to and managed to get, I think, four copies of him out. Gross. Simultaneously. Wow, that thing <laughs> sat there forever. Yes, it did. I was, so, there was one removal attempt on it, but I had a Teferi's Protection, and I saved myself and was right back out of the next turn. But because he reduces damage out the Planeswalkers by one, then at that point my Planeswalkers are just not getting touched. Plus, you know, that, invincible. each one of those let me go fetch a Planeswalker. And and then I, I, I went and got the Ajani um, that lets me put additional counters on Planeswalkers, and that just happened to run into Chain Veil. And so, like, by the time I got this off on the board, everyone's just like, well, let's just scoop this up. This is just going to be nonsense. So, yeah, if you get four or five years out, things play pretty good in that deck. I think that's the key to victory. Any uh, MVP cards you saw, Max? Experimental Frenzy. Yeah, I, that was one I was going to mention, too. Like, that just did work. I'd like to hear if anybody out there has put that in their red or their Boros decks and how it's playing for them. Because it, I've just, it's always been amazing when I've seen it in games. It's better than Outpost Siege, I would say. I mean, like, unless your deck is built with, like, a huge curve where, like, you're just 
all you see is five drops. If you've got a remotely low curve in your deck, right, it's fantastic. I actually like having both of them out because you know yeah. you always know that top card with experimental frenzy. So it's like okay, I know I can cast this next turn. You know what you're going to do with it. the exiled card. Yeah. Yep, and then you can. It just gets you one card deeper with experimental frenzy, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about that card. It's It's been amazing. Well, if you want to tell us whether or not you've got any luck with the Chronicle Frenzy, uh, you can find us on social media at? Uh, Twitter, at CMDR Central. Uh, Facebook search us CMDR Central. YouTube search us CMDR Central. And find us online at cmdrcentral.com. You can also find us on iTunes by searching, you know, I don't know. CMDR what, Central. Probably CMDR Central. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it just seems redundant to keep saying it yes. over and over again. but. And if you uh, listen on iTunes and go out there and give us a uh, five-star review, we would really appreciate that and leave a comment. That helps us a lot bump up in the ratings and show up on uh, the games feed, which we actually made a couple appearances on so far this year in the top 25 yep. podcasts for the day. So we appreciate that. You can also find us at FlipSideGaming.com. Yes, indeed. Uh, use promo code CMDR in all caps, and you'll get 10% off your order of $10 or more. You can go buy a couple experimental frenzies. Yes, or Beast Whispers, because they're still really cheap. They are. Um, and you can also apparently find us by sending a letter to our local game store, <laughs> <laughs> which we just picked up tonight. Our, our shop owner messaged me. He's like, we have mail here for you. <laughs> 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 and I, and, I, and I, I found it, I'm like... Did you mean to send this to me? I thought maybe he would like just click the wrong person. He's like, no, there's a there's mail here for you guys. So I stopped and grabbed it, you know, ten minutes ago before I I, I came to record the show and we opened it up and it was a letter from somebody who's a listener that's was semi anonymous, although he he signed it, but we couldn't read the signature either. Um, no return address, no nothing. Yeah, but but it was a very nice letter saying thank you um, for the show and included a Christmas gift for us and. Some pictures of cards uh, he found in a collection he bought, one of which was a tabernacle. That's uh, a good hit there. It's a pretty right. good hit if you can find a tabernacle in a collection. Um, and a deck list. So, yeah, we're, we'll look at the deck list and, and maybe make say a few words about it next week as well. We haven't had time yet, but thank you very much for that. That was like a really cool post-Christmas thing to find that letter at the shop. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So yeah, I now know where I can send have people send mail though. Right, if now I don't want it coming here. <laughs> right, now you have a, <laughs> that's your backup anonymous mailer plan. That's a good it's idea. Cheaper than a PO box. Yes, right there you go. <laughs> if you want to talk to us in another way through our Slack server, you can join us at Patreon.com/slash/CMDRCentral. You can, and there's been a lot of uh, preview conversation going on this week with the new cards from Revenant Allegiance coming out. Oh boy, has there ever! <laughs> So uh, next week's show will be about the the, the preview of that. Um, so we're not going to really go into any of those cards. But, yeah, it's been a busy couple of days with a lot of really good cards coming out. So look forward to that. You can also find us. That's it. That's it. All right. All right. We uh, have contests to announce, though. We do. We have contest winners to announce. We do. So for this past month, so December, uh, for the Twitter giveaway, we're giving away a Vanguard card. And the Dragon Shield sli- side loading inner sleeves. And the winner of that is going to be James Fitzsimmons. And he can be found at Mr. Fitzy Fitz. I know that name from Twitter for sure. Yes. So congratulations, James. We'll reach out to you or reach out to us, whichever one comes first. Yes, indeed. On Monday when I you hear this. I wish I would have came up with a cool name for my Twitter handle. Squishy is squishy. Is pretty, why is squishy is <laughs> pretty good. Why is squishy one? Did someone else have why is squishy? No, that, I've always had wise. You did the one for okay. years and years and years. <laughs> so. He's the first. Or, and if they take it over, then I have one other one that I use. I like I use for my arena account. It's Z28 Squishy because <laughs> I own a Z28 Camaro. Oh, so. there you go. All nice. Right. For our Patreon drawing last month, we were giving away a sealed Ultimate Masters box topper. Yes, that I'm indeed. still itching just to rip open right <laughs> uh, now. Donated <laughs> by friend of the show, Dan Mao. Thank you very much, Dan, and, for that. And patron supporter. And here's the here's a little funny story. I went to do the randomization of the drawing today yep. at work, and I hit the button, and lo and behold, Dan Mel shows up, <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, do it again." <laughs> so he's, the he's not going to win his own card. Exactly. So the winner is Matt Birdie. Oh, nice. Uh, so Matt, uh, reach out to us on Slack, or if you're in the shop next week we'll have it for you yes yes indeed yeah matt's a listener who's actually been driving over to play with us on tuesday 
And we had a few people, I probably should mention that one in the games we played section, but um, I think we had like three or four listeners in the shop on Tuesday and New Year's Day playing games. So that was really cool to see. Mm-hmm. Really? They weren't playing with Chris because you, t- you were testing Modern. But yeah, we had um, a Patreon supporter, Matt, and we had- His wife. Uh, his wife was there as well, and Dan was there, and Morris, uh, Morris, Morris. is a Patreon supporter yeah, as well. I knew Morris and Dan were there. I didn't see the other two. So if you are uh, within driving distance, you're welcome to stop by and play those on Tuesdays. And I will be there this Tuesday to play. Yes, you will. Oh, Alesha. If- if any of you find a foil sacred foundry laying around somewhere, <laughs> let That's me Chris know because I can't. completely you lost, lost mine. <laughs> From guilds, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about new drawings. New drawings for the for the month. <laughs> yes. I, I almost skipped that part. You did. Nice segue, Matt. Thank you. Uh, so this month for Patreon, uh, we are going to be giving away a bundle of Ravnica allegiances. Yes, indeed. Just make sure you continue to support us. Our Start supporting us by the end of January, and we'll get that you entered into the contest. Very good. How about our Twitter giveaway? Our Twitter giveaway is going to be a full art altar of a uh, ley line of anticipation. Yeah. Done by local player in front of the show, Mark Richter. He did a really good looking Veil of the Nightclad altar for me, and the uh, ley line one looks excellent as well. Yes. Uh, He can be found on Twitter at Richter Alters. And he does take commission, so we'll, we'll tweet a picture of the ley line mm-hmm. after the show airs. Uh, and then the way you get to enter is uh, when you see our weekly show episode tweets, Yep. comment in the tweet, tag at Richter Alters, and talk about a card you'd like to see get the full art Oh, nice! Uh, magic done to it. Okay, good deal. That works. Tabernacle of Pendleville. <laughs> you if have you to supply the, the card. Right, yeah. If you found one in a collection, you can get it altered. I don't think I could do that. I've seen people. Oh man, altered. I couldn't. I would I've not seen be able get to get like underground seas altered. I'm like, why don't? <laughs> I feel like the people who do that, it's because they're so damaged, they're like not playable. In that case, I guess it would make sense, maybe. But man, still that's... a damaged underground Eesh. sea might get you something. Yeah, I mean, we. I have taped back together a ripped engineer explosives into a perfect fit into a dragon shield <laughs> to play it and it was hard to tell you could tell like if you picked it up and went to bend it you could tell that it was ripped but if you just like ran your hand across it you couldn't tell couldn't feel the seam yeah well that tropical island i have that was ran over by a desk chair is pl- <laughs> sleeve playable you can't even tell so all right so those are the contests we've had we have going on in january uh anything else exciting happening before we move on to the the main topic of the of the night I don't think so. I got nothing. All right. So what we're going to talk about this week is um, lowering expectations on some cards. And what that means is there are some situations where you're looking to hit a home run with a card, um, but you don't need to. Like like just taking the very basic thing that it does is good enough. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, I thought of this topic, and it kind of popped out of my head. We were playing... This week, Max cast appears whim in a game. Garbage card. Which is a terrible terrible. <laughs> Actually, I feel I, I believe it was also like their pick of the week on Brainstorm it, Brewery. It was or, this week. Yeah. Um so Max cast it and went and got, I think, a command tower. I did. And you only hit one or two things. You hit like a signet. I, I think I hit one thing. It was a total. one signet. And I and, and I thought to myself, oh, that was kind of a disappointing appears whim. Usually they're better than that. And then I was like, well, not really. He just got a perfect land that fixes all his colors, and he knocked away somebody else's ramp that they had to spend mana on, and now they no longer have it. Like that. So the worst-case scenario is still pretty good. Now, could you have waited two turns and gotten two more artifacts? Maybe. But, like, you don't need to. They're, so what we're talking about is cards that, that people sometimes want to go for this huge, splashy play, and you don't need to. If you cast it just for the minimal amount you're in good shape, and, and we want to point that out because I think people sometimes wait too long. The opposite of this would be something like Blue Sun Zenith, where you have, like, if you're casting... Very Sun- good card. But if you're casting it for five... I'm, li- I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it can be, like, in the right deck, a generous ton of mana. Like, if you're playing maybe, crew, like, uh, Crew Fix, God of Horizons, where you've got a ton of mana in your pool. Right. It totally makes sense. But if you have to... But you have to wait to cast it. If you're casting it for five and drawing two cards, that feels terrible. Um, so we're talking about cards that, that, that are the opposite of that, that have kind of a, that people maybe want to wait too long on, and you don't need to wait too long. Um, so Max, you want to start us off with a couple here? Yeah. Um, you want me to go in order or just the ones I had before? Whatever you want. So we're going to go with one of my favorite cards 
and that's Seasons Past. Yes. That, so, was, that was one of the first ones I thought of when we mentioned this. Yep. So that's four green green for a sorcery. Return any number of cards from your graveyard with different converted mana costs. Um, I love this card. I play it in every green deck I've built or have attempted to build. Um, and I've kind of gained the opinion of my rule of thumb is if I can get three things back, it's a home run right there. Right. So that, whether it's a land, a one drop, two drop, land, five drop, four drop, three things, I'm happy with that. Obviously, yes, you want to be getting that five to seven cards back, you know. In a perfect world, sure. You're, you're going to get zero to seven and all the way through. But you know what? If you can get a fetch land and, you know, a council's judgment and maybe a parallel lives or something for six mana, that's great. The, the, um, yeah, whenever I've seen you cast it, and I've seen you cast it and get like six things back, but I've also seen you cast it and grab the fetch land and grab one removal spell. And that's still almost always worth yeah. that's that's worth your six mana. Like if you just grab a sword of plow shares and one fetch land, that's still probably worth it. Being able to take out a threat or at least have that in your hand and grab another land for the turn, that's that's worth it for sure. And I, I think I will jump to another card in the list because it kind of is a good comparison to this, and that's Yogmas Will, which is a famous card. It's known as Yogg's Win in vintage formats because you just would win the game back then with it. Um and I got one several years ago, and I wanted to try it in a deck. And I remember at first kind of being disappointed in it because I was waiting to do this huge turn. And I was like, I never have 14 things in my graveyard I can cast like I wanted to. But eventually I realized, like, that's not what you need to do. It's it's a three-mana card, and if you bring back one land spell and you kind of like spun the Reclamation, or not spun the Reclamation, um, what did you just say, Max? Seasons Passed. Seasons Passed. I always forget that card's name for some reason. <laughs> um, but similar to that, like if I cast a land and I cast an Assassin's Trophy or something, that's 100% worth my mana. And plenty of times I get more than that out of it. Even if it's not flashy stuff, even if you're just grabbing like one mana dork and a creature and something else, it's absolutely worth it. So I think that's a card like I wanted to make into this ridiculous home run card and... If you just get value out of it, it's still really, really strong. Chris, what do you think of when you think of cards that have this this thing that people want to wait too long on and you don't need to? The very first one that popped in my mind was Return to Dust. Okay. okay. Due to the fact that the most value you get is when you cast during your main phase. Yep, because you get to hit two things. But it is an instant speed spell. And you can respond to a problem on the stack with it. and exile it. It's not just destroy, it's XL. Right. So, yep. And people would argue, well, you can do Declamor, all that other stuff. No, I want the thing gone forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the very first one that popped into my mind. Yeah, I, that's a good call, too, because I've I've caught myself doing that before, where I ever turn to dust in hand, I'm like, oh, I could solve that problem. But if I wait till my main phase... I can take care of both those I can cards. take care of both of them, but then sometimes things can go wrong. Like, you know, it wasn't a return to dust, but I had a situation this week in a game where I had a Declamor in hand, and I didn't hit a worm coil engine that came at me because I'm like, I can eat the six. I'll, I'll wait. Of course um, you can. Right. But it put him over 50, and then he followed that up by casting Aetherflux Reservoir. Oh, no. And, and doming me. But had I responded to that, had it not been greedy, and, and same thing would have been Return of Dust. I, if that was Return of Dust in my hand, I would have done the same thing. I'd have been like, ah, I'll wait till my main phase and take care of two things at once so that same problem would have occurred. I would have been kind of greedy instead of dealing with the problem. And yep. Trying to get the maximum value out of it, and I still would have lost the game. So it was the same situation there. I yeah. think. I think another thing with Return to Dust, though, is like Chris said, not casting on your main phase is also resource management because it's freeing up four mana you get to spend on your turn right. to do something else. Right. Yeah, that's a that's a good one that people want to overplay as well. Um, how about you, Max? Back to you. Uh, my next one is going to be Search for His Canta. Oh, okay. So. This was from Ixalan. Yep. It's, a, it's an enchantment, and it essentially is, at the beginning of your upkeep, surveil. Right. That's yes. essentially what it is. Um, no, you look at the top card of your library. And you either keep it there or you put it in your graveyard. Yes. So it's surveil. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'd be so more broken if it actually said surveil. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people want that, and they get they want the get seven cards into your yard to flip it so you can use the land portion to dig through, what, four to find a non-creature, non... Land. Non-land card. But I really just like using it for the surveil. 
Yeah. Like I run it in my Brago deck and I rarely flip it unless I like need a blue source. A lot of people don't realize that it's a May ability on flipping. Right. Yes. Um, there's actually an instance that I watched a uh, good pal of mine, Nate, playing in Standard where he went and he looked at the top card, drew, he had like 10 cards in his li- or in his graveyard and he's like, oh, I forgot to flip search. And the guy's like, oh, well, you can flip it now. He's like, no, we're playing, you know, a good game. I'm not going to take it back or anything. And I'm sitting behind him laughing because I know that he's digging for a board wipe right now. And that's why he hasn't flipped search. <laughs> the guy was just absolutely, just completely baffled that he wouldn't flip it. Huh. Yeah. It makes sense, though. I mean, I, I agree. I would rather have it as yep. the filtering than I would flipped over most of the time. Yeah. It's it's free versus paying three mana to do it. Well, it's also one of those cards. This isn't exactly the same thing, but people also get a little greedy there where they're like, well, I don't want to put cards in my graveyard. Like, yeah, who cares? You're, right. you're digging down to answers. If you have graveyard or curse, that's great, but like, don't be afraid to discard cards if you need to. Filtering is really, really useful. Now, I know we, we preach graveyard hate. I really want to be an advocate that you need cards in every deck that does something with your graveyard though too if you can because because yep. you know, somebody will somebody will mill you or you're just going to discard stuff because you because yep. you're playing search or you're using surveil cards i mean stuff's just going to get in your graveyard i tend to agree with that as well um i will i will mention you talked about a standard card well here's another one hangerback walker hangerback walker feels great to cast for 10 with five counters on it but I, as a standard player chris I, I bet you saw plenty of hanger back walkers for with one counter on him. Yeah, that's still a really annoying card to deal with. It and, is now maybe not so much in commander. You probably don't want to cast it for one unless you're, you know, playing Bray or have some kind of combo. But maybe you do. Like there are situations it's, where you do. It's still a good mana sink because it's something you can put your mana into every yeah. turn. Like especially if you have nothing else going on, and you just cast them early, leaving up. Like I like to bluff a lot of players when I'm playing too, so I'll leave up mana. And then, you know, then you can just be like, oh, well, I'll put a counter on him at the end of turn. And yep. He's a good two-drop in my Regna and Krav deck. Yeah. Because unless someone deglamors him or exiles him, I'm getting a body off of it if he does get destroyed before my second turn. Well, and Hangerback Walker got to win me a game this week in my Vela deck where I cast Hangerback Walker and then sacrificed it to Ashen's Altar to make, like, the six tokens, because I, I put, like, 12 mana into it or whatever it was. Which triggered Vela. Which triggered Vela. Sacrificed all the, all the all the tokens, then to trigger Vela, like, six more times. And I had all that mana, and then I was able to go cast a tutor to go get a... I didn't, I didn't actually get it. The other person conceded, because they knew what I was going to go do, but I was going to go get um, Mere Battlesphere, Battle Sphere, which would have given me that many more tokens I could have sacked for the Vela triggers yep. again, and that would have been enough to win. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, just cast it... You don't need to wait to cast it for 14. <laughs> it's still a really, really yeah. good card. The other one similar to it would be uh, Walking Bliss, which I don't think yeah. is quite as powerful in Commander. Unless you're just doing the infinite, some kind of yep. uh, the, the trick but with Micaeus or something. But early on, if you put him down as one mana or for on turn two, so two mana into it, but it, with one counter, you can make it bigger. Yeah, right, yeah. Or you can block and then shoot something else off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and we're, not, we're not saying, like, don't go for the home run because there's absolutely times when, like, it's worth waiting, but just don't be afraid to take the, the value either. Yep. Because if you just, if, if all you do is sit there and wait for the perfect opportunity, you're going to lose games trying to wait for that perfect situation where you can hang her back for 14. Agreed. What, do you, what else you got for me, Max? Does Chris have another one? I have one that Dana's going to hate. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Treasure Cruise. Oh, treasure, uh, treasure. So here's... I so actually, I, I, just, I <laughs> lumped these all into Delph. So it's sure. like Treasure Cruise, yep. Dig Through Time, Murderous Cut. Yep. Um, I've noticed a lot of people try to get the maximum value out yeah. of it. Like I, for Treasure Cruise, I'm a Delph 7 and pay one blue for it. It, You don't have to do that. Particularly if you, if you have nothing else going on. Yeah. If, you, if you're not holding Counterfill Mana or something, just draw the cards. Yep. Um, plus, as I just advocated earlier, you need cards that play through Graveyard. So if you keep exiling and stuff with Delve then you lose the opportunity to use those cards. I did put Treasure Cruise back in my Talran deck and, and cast it this week. I got to cast it this week. And then someone else cast it. They got to, they played something to let you cast spells from someone's graveyard. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> someone else then cast my Treasure Cruise. Was it that uh, new mnemonic uh, something from guilds? It wasn't. I don't remember what it was. Um, yeah, I don't remember what spell it was, but yeah. So somebody else got to cast my Treasure Cruise then. Um, the other thing I want to lump in with Delve too is Convoke. Yeah. Um, I've like seen a lot, of, a lot of people go, 
well, I'm going to tap all these creatures to convoke out a spell. You don't need to do that. I think that's going overboard. Um, a big one is, I'm going to relate this back to standard because it actually happened to me the other night, was a venerated Loxodon. So he's got, he's four colorless and one white with convoke. And when he comes into play, all the creatures you convoke get a counter on him. Right. Well, I went overboard, convoked everything with just him on the field, and ended up losing the game because of that. You lost all your blockers. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. That's something the haste comes down and you can't deal with it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's I like to lump those two together yeah, for no. over, like overdoing it, I guess. Overextending or being yep. kind of being greedy. Yep. I mean, being I'm, greedy when you can just cast it for its mana cost. Yeah. Very I, fair. I like, uh, I like that the treasure cruise for sure because that's really easy to be able to, to like be counting your cards in your graveyard and be like uh maybe if i wait two turns i can cast it for one like, yep. well but if you're if you're already at one or two cards in hand like just refill your hand if you've got nothing else going on don't be trying to like make the perfect yeah, maximized the, play just refill your hand the biggest one that i've i see though is probably murder cut out of all of them because it's probably the best of the delve spells that you see in commander most of the time and i'll see people wait until they can delve it all away to right. cast it, and it's like, why not just tap three mana and delve two cards away? Yeah. You know, kill something on turn three instead of Particularly because there's later. almost always a couple bad cards. Like, you don't need to fully... You can just get rid of a couple of the bad cards, and that's probably good enough. Yep. Well, well, since we've mentioned a couple artifacts, the Hanger Back and Ballista, um, I will also say Everflowing Chalice. And this is one I kind of had to train myself to do, too. Everflowing Chalice for two is a great play. Yep. Um, and matter of fact, I kind of sometimes feel better doing that because I feel like no one's going to remove it. When you do Everflowing Chalice for eight. For four, yeah. Someone's going to be trying to hit that when you're tapping it for four mana. Yeah. Um, whereas if you do it on turn two for two mana, that's that's probably the most important point in the game for ramp anyway. And no one's aiming removal spells at that Everflowing Chalice with one counter on it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I know a lot of people play Everflowing Chalice in 1v1 um, because it is a two mana mana rank yeah, is right. what it is. Does it come into play tapped? Yep. If you happen to draw it later in the game and you have mana free, you can you know make the big play. But I think you don't want to hold Everflowing Chalice waiting for that perfect moment. Oh, no. I just think that's one it. of the cards. If that's in your opening hand, you just drop cap. it on turn two. Yeah, just get it out there. Now, m- maybe you have some certain deck with a lot of proliferate stuff. But even then, like, so what? You have proliferate stuff. You can still put the counters on it yep. later on. I think you still just want it out in almost every situation. But that's one I've had to like tell myself because i've caught myself going well if i wait till next turn like no just get it out there i notice a lot of people miss stuff in the early part of the game like they let stuff slide so if you put that out early part of the game they're not going to remove it late part of the game now if you drop it middle of the game for x amount of mana it's something that's gonna be fresh in their mind right exactly start showing up and i kind of figure too if someone's gonna naturalize your um everflowing chalice on turn two well then you should just think to yourself well good now they're missing a naturalize for when I play something actually scary in two turns. Like my Chromatic Lantern. Or, right, or my Mimic That, or my, you know... Who plays Naturalize? Whatever. Well, that's a terrible <laughs> example, but yes, you know what I mean. The Glamour, <laughs> or a Crows and Griff, or whatever. Um, Chris, give me give me another card here. Um, We'll go with one... I'm not quite sure if this would have lumped into it, but I think it's one that I, I think goes with this one. Grasp of Fate. Oh, the the soul uh, or oblivion ring that hits multiple players. Yep, hits multiple players. Now, in my opinion, this card can be cast immediately to get rid of one thing. Yeah, you don't have to have something on everybody's side of the board. Do you? you well, and, and you know, maximum if, value. If you pick a ba- and if you're picking bad targets, if you're like, well, that guy has you know nothing worthwhile out except for that land or elves. Well, all you've done then is like if, if you're hitting a baneslayer angel and you're hitting somebody else's. Um, you know, Runescar Demon, both both those players want to remove that yep. that counter. If 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 you're hitting a Bane Slayer Angel and someone else's Lanowar Elves because the only target they have, they don't care. They're not going to remove it. The Grasp of Fate. Then, no, yeah, the Lanowar players are going to be like, whatever, because I'm going to end up giving that guy back a Bane Slayer right, that not, I can't deal with. So sometimes you're better off just hitting the one strong target than you yep. are trying to get three really good things underneath it. Yeah, and this is actually a card that um, I haven't seen played a whole lot lately. It's thirteen dollars. Is it is really? It, wow! Because it's had one printing. Well, that makes sense why I haven't seen it played yeah, it no very kidding. often. It was just in the commander deck, right? It's commander fifteen, huh? Deck. Because it's, it's a strong card. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't in the um, enchantress deck this year. Interesting. I also look. I know I bought the deck. I don't know where mine is right now because it's not currently in a deck. <laughs> I probably <laughs> traded mine away way back I when that deck did, came. Yeah. Oh no, that was in the giant deck. I'm pretty sure I traded. Mine oh, away. it was. Well, I got. I did get one. I think. It would be that or the 
uh, Daxos deck. That might have been the Daxos deck. That would make sense. It being enchantment, an enchantment, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, one more I will mention because this came up the other night when I was playing as well was Distant Melody. Um, it's a sorcery for three and a blue, and it says choose creature type and draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. Now, ideally, you probably want to have it in some kind of a token deck or a tribal deck where you're going to be able to you know name a creature really easily. But again, in watching myself, I have to be cautious because the impulse in Talran is to be like, oh, I want to wait till I have seven drakes out and draw seven cards. Right. I don't need if I draw three cards for four mana and if I have three drakes in play, that's still a really, really good value play. And I had to I had to kind of like force like slap myself on the wrist the other night when I was playing. So I had four drakes out and I'm like, but if I wait till next turn, I can have seven drakes out. I'm like, no, just cast it. Just draw your cards. So I forced myself to do that. Um so yeah, I, I I totally get the temptation to wait, but like you don't need to make the home run to have a card generate value. I mean, Minions Murmurs is similar to that as well. Right, yeah, same thing. I mean, except instead of you just lose X life along with drawing X cards. Speaking of that, do you have that in your uh, Regnan Krav deck? Not yet. That could be a good fit for that one. I, I do like that one in Regnan Krav because it is not type specific. It's just right, yes, total, it's number, just total number of creatures. So, how about you, Max? Um, I'm going to lump a bunch together and we're going to call it board wipes. Yeah. Uh, you know, board wipes are great when you can destroy. A dozen things. It feels great when you cast that Supreme Verdict when you have one creature and everyone else has five. Right. Um, but at the same time, if you need to get rid of one or two problematic creatures are with Back to Nature, one or two problematic enchantments, casting that early does a lot of work because it makes sure you can keep playing for the next couple of turns. I mean, I've cast Supreme Verdict when the only scary thing in play was your Brago. Yes, you have. Because I knew you had a grip full of cards, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to kill that Brago, and, you know, incidentally, I'll kill that one dude's Birds of Paradise, but whatever. Um, That always feels bad for some reason. However, if I would have utter-ended your Brago, that would have felt like a perfectly fine play. And those are the exact same thing. It's exactly four mana to take care of one creature, basically. The Birds of Paradise is kind of irrelevant in that case. Right. Um, But for some reason, like, you you feel psychologically resistant to to casting the board wipe, for one or two creatures where you're like you're fine spending four mana on a utter end to do the same thing. The big one out of all the board wipes that I've seen misplayed the most has to be Decree of Pain. That's and that one really makes you want to be greedy. Yep. I have I've done it once. I don't think I've seen many other people do it. But Decree of Pain does have wonderful claws on it for <laughs> yeah, cycling. You bet. And I don't think I ever see anyone use it. It gets used I, way less than it should, I will say that for sure. Yeah, I mean if you're that black white player and you ha- already have Elish Norn out, everything's already getting minus two, minus two. Why don't you cycle it and probably kill half those yep. tokens and on your opponent's cycling, side? Cycling, you get to draw a card out of it, too, right? So. Yeah, um, well, there's there, there's there's two layers to that. There's number one, there's a layer where someone says, "Ah, I don't want to cycle it. I want to wait and hard cast it and get the card draw." Yep. But the second one is even when they have the ability to hard cast it, they're like, "Oh, but if I wait one more turn, he's going to play two more creatures and he'll play his commander, and then I can draw twelve cards instead of nine. Yeah, just draw <laughs> nine cards. Be happy with wiping the board and drawing nine cards. That's pretty great." See, I, I'm usually not greedy with my counter spells. As soon as I have mana f- or my uh, board wipes, as soon as I have mana for them, I will jam it. If I yeah, have nothing else going on, unless I'm way ahead on board, then I'm like, no, we don't do this now. But if I'm behind at all, I'm just like, no, let's just wipe it and start over. See if see if those guys can recoup, because I'm not quite as far ahead as you guys are. Right. Well, similar to Degree of Pain, one card that I run in, I think, two decks is Overwhelming Intellect, which is a counter creature spell, and then you draw cards. And it's the same thing there. I, I, I sometimes have to tell myself, don't... Be wait for waiting for the Thrax of Mundar or the Blight Steel. Just like if if you can hit somebody's tempo on a four drop and draw four cards for six mana, that's great. Do you have that temptation with mana drain too? Uh, not not as bad with mana drain because for whatever reason in my head I just feel like it's a counter spell with an added bonus. <laughs> so so I'm not going for the home run there. Um, but I remember when I used to run Plasm Capture. For some reason, because it was four mana, I felt like I wanted to get the maximum value out of it. Yep. Whereas at two mana for mana drain, I feel like, yeah, whatever. Anything you get is just gravy. Yeah. But yeah, plasm capture absolutely is one where like, oh, I want to, I want to hit that nine drop. <laughs> <laughs> My personal one that fits into this category would be settle the wreckage. Like, yeah. I really like to hold that for a big alpha strike, but at the same time, it's like, well, if I have a euro 
that's going to hit me for 452,000 damage. I'll just exile that instead. Well, a good one similar to that, then, is Rishkar's Expertise. Yes. If if you draw three cards off a three-drop and then play another three-drop, that's awesome. And that's the worst-case scenario of Rishkar's Expertise is, like, you play a three-drop and draw a couple cards. I understand the temptation to want to like berserk that Multani <laughs> and, and draw 28 because I've got, you know, that card in my, my deck that has Multani and I'm always like, oh, if I bloodlust this next turn <laughs> and then Rishkar's expertise. Well, I, and I got to this week in a game, I, 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 I wasn't greedy because I drew it at the right time. I didn't have any other choice, but I was playing my Enchantress deck and I had Sigarda out and I played Nylea's Colossus which doubles the power of a creature whenever an enchantment comes into play. So I, I made Sigarda huge and then got to risk for expertise and draw just all the cards. Um, but that would have been very tempting had I had a different sequence where I'm like, if I wait till next turn on the risk cards expertise and cast three enchantments, I can draw 30. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one, though. Like, if you just settle for the bottom end of the barrel on risk cards expertise – it's still a phenomenal draw spell. Honestly, if you're playing mono green, I would fire it off even if I had a Llanowar Elf in play. If you're down that many sure, cards well, sure, because and it's if the only got, thing you and have. And if you've got a mid full of cards, if you've got a couple of cards in hand anyway, like it's maybe worthwhile just to play the five drop for nothing. Yep. So like it's going to bounce. You're, you're really not losing mana. If you're dropping a four or five drop and you draw one or two cards off you know, your Llanowar Elves or something that's a two two or something, your Grizzly Bears, that's still, that's still probably revenue neutral in terms of mana because you're going to spend six mana to cast that creature anyway so exactly yeah i am um, uh i think that is one that i i really have to watch out for max any more here for us i have one more all right and that would be heroic intervention yeah that's on my list as well um typically you really want to save this for the board wipes or you you want to make it into that play that turns the that turns the loss into a win where the person's like all right here's my supreme verdict and you're like oh man I'm just going to throw like intervention in that, and then I'll kill you next turn. Yeah. Because you've lost all your creatures, no one else's board state. Um, but. I have done, to, in Dromoka, someone went to go kill a privileged position, and we, had that been removed, my entire board state would have been swept away. Right. And so I'm like, well, I'm just going to heroic intervention. And it hoes that entire player's turn, because he's like, well, now I can't hit anything. It's two mana. If you save one you, if you save Dromoka one time, you've traded one card and two mana for whatever they try to do, whether it's an Anguish Unmaking, well, I guess that wouldn't work because it's, oh, and it's hexproof, so that would work. You're, 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 costing, you're trading them a card that costs more mana for yours, and it's going to change their plans. That's almost always worth it, even if you just save one thing. Saving your Gaia's Cradle because it's all right, your yeah. permanents. Yeah, it's everything. Let them crack that strip mine, target, and then cast it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be against that huge, crazy blowout spell. At two mana, you can afford to to just save one thing. So uh, you just brought up strip mine. Why don't we talk about strip mine and land destruction in sure. general? Yeah, I've seen people be greedy with that. I'm definitely one of them. But if someone's off, like say they're playing three colors, they only have two colors out. As soon as they drop that third color, strip mine that land. Yeah, I mean, if it's not going to set you back too yeah. far. Yeah, don't it, it be greedy on, and wait for like a Maze of Eth or Cabal Coffers or Like it depends on the like game that. style you're playing. If you're like playing with somebody who's new, I probably wouldn't do it. But like if I'm, it, particularly if it's late in the game or something and you know somebody needs two red to cast their commander, you're like, okay, we're on turn 11. I'm just going to kill your mountain so you can't yep. cast your commander and then I'm going to be able to win next turn. But don't be like, but what if he plays a Cabal Coffers? Well, <laughs> just just take what you can get there at exactly. that point in the game. Um, yeah, because I bet I'm guilty of that one. Where I'm, where, or, or you see somebody play an Ancient Tomb even, and you're like, ugh, now they're one man ahead of me, but but what if they damage, play a Nykthos? But they're taking two damage. Yeah. That's fine. They can keep taking it. But, but you would probably still be better off strip mining it yep. and, and, and keeping them from, because over the course of the next five turns, okay, they're taking 10 damage, but they're up 10 mana on you. Exactly. So it's probably worth that trade there as well. Um, well, you, and you mentioned like Intervention, Max. Teferi's Protection is the same way. It's granted it's one more mana, but same thing. If you're just saving one creature, if it's a good creature, if you're saving your Consecrated Sphinx, like if someone goes to Swords to Plow Charge your Consecrated Sphinx and you just Teferi's Protection, that's worth it, I would I would say. You're trading one card and three mana to have that Sphinx back next turn to keep drawing you more cards. I I would, yes, I agree with you. 
I also think it depends on where the turn order is. It depends on your board Be- state. Because like kind of thing if you're well. if player one's doing it to you and you're player four, you're now missing out on sure. potentially all those draws. For yeah, you're missing out on the draws. But I do. I mean, I agree with the concept. The principle. Of, yes. Like in your Jamoka deck, right? There are probably situations where you're like Jamoka's wearing. Um, Black Blade Blade. Forge right now and I'm going to one shot to my next turn and they're like oh, I'm going to kill you yeah. and I'm like no you're, I'm just going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend it to save one creature, and then, by the way, next turn, I know uh, where Dermot is going. I'm going to you the right. whole time. <laughs> exactly, right. Like, yeah, I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh, look, I drew a true conviction. Thank right. you for all the life. Do you have any more here for us, Chris? Uh, the last one that I had, um, and actually I just saw this now, it was actually lumped in with my return address, is Vandal Blast. Oh, yeah. Vandal Blast single target is just a shatter. Yep. I mean, like, that's, for one man, that's a legit... It's even better right, than that's, shatter. That's true, yeah. It's one man. It, that's a legit target for yep. one for that cost and i don't i think i've seen you cast it once for one mana but usually i see everyone cast it for overload yeah and the overload's great like it's it, number one it's it's not like you're waiting for 10 mana it, it is only five i think for the overload or is it six yeah, four colorless and one red right. so it's relatively easy to wait but if someone plays something super if someone plays a lightning greaves and they've got a scary commander like they're playing thrax and mundar or they're playing brago for example if someone was like a scumbag playing a brago deck i'm gonna point any <laughs> fingers anywhere <laughs> But like that kind of thing, like that's probably worth getting that lightning greaves out because if they can equip it and they've already got something else scary in play that they're going to blink with a brago or that they're going to swing with that thrax and make you sack a creature and put you on a clock, you're you're yep. on a three hit clock with thrax. Um, you're probably better just get it gone. Like don't wait till you have enough mana or you have enough targets. Just have that I, lightning I greaves be think gone. It, probably a lot of people's mistake with it is. Is that artifacts usually are not too scary? Like they don't pose the threat themselves. It's what it's what they enable that's the yes, threat. Yes, it's what they enable, and you got to kind of think ahead about it. Like if someone jams a turn to Thran Dynamo or something, do you let that go or do you destroy it? I think I would destroy it. Yeah, I mean, that's because if you're that's... already ramping into turn two Thran Dynamo, you're just like, yeah, uh. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with that. Uh, I've got one more. I will. <laughs> Max is shaking his head. I don't know. What are you talking about? about? I don't do that. <laughs> Uh, I've got one more I'll mention because we mentioned that on the show a couple weeks back, um, Glimpse of Nature, and we said the same thing about it. It doesn't need to be a home run. Um, if you draw two cards for one mana, if you play it, cast two creature spells, and that's it, that's the best. That's one of the best draw spells. In the, that's one mana short of an That's one card short of an Ancestral Recall. Yep. And you should be thrilled with that in green. I get the temptation to wait for like, oh, if I wait till next turn, I can do four creatures or five creatures but like and and if you can do that safely like maybe you're in a deck where like you're not worried about losing for the next three or four turns then i'm not, I'm not saying don't do it but like there are situations where like just take the, the two cards and be happy with that so hopefully this conversation got you guys thinking about a few of these cards that you have in your decks that maybe you play too long for and if you or you hold out too long to play and if you want to reach out and find us on social media and, and suggest a few ones that we didn't talk about that would be great and yes, we all know Cyclonic Rift is one of them. That's true, we yeah. We just chose not to talk right. about yeah. it. Um, Wait, it is? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot overload a Rift? I, I tried. I, I've probably seen more non-overloaded Rifts than I've seen non-overloaded Vandal Blasts. Really? Yeah. yeah. I would bet. Well, I tried to not overload a Rift one day and Rift my own creature until an opponent pointed, pointed out that it you out, can't. Yeah. You can't, and I'm like... Oh, that sucks, because I was about to do some broken things right now. <laughs> you were playing my Brago deck when you yep. tried that. <laughs> so, oh, that would be so broken if you could do that. So reach out on Twitter and let us know of, of any of these cards that uh, you guys always see played that people need to be willing to settle for less. Um, and I will mention this as well. I think we're going to put this up on Facebook. This was an idea that basically occurred to me as I was driving over here. So this is the first you two have heard of this, but we've talked about homework cards before. Um, like putting okay. cards in decks to try them out. And I think we will grab some people on Facebook that are that are participating in our in our chat there and see if we want to get like a group homework project going where people throw out, I've always wanted to see this card or tr- and I don't have the right deck for it. Does anyone want to try it out and let me know how it played? So do like kind of an exchange of homework cards to try and then report back. So if you have any interest in participating in that, uh, like us on Facebook and I will make a post in the next... See, this will air on Monday, so I will make something next week about that, and we'll get some kind of a a program going, and we'll report back here with results on cards people tested out and what your results were. Okay. So I think that is it for this show, gentlemen. Anything else anyone wants to add? I'm good. 
We will be back next week talking about Ravnica Allegiance. Until then, I'm Dana. I'm Max. And I'm Chris. Thank <laughs> you.